Hello folks, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. Now, today, something a lot of you have been waiting for, uh, just trickling out into the supply chain and certainly in the UK just arrived. It's the new, brand new, Tamiar Tomcat F14A, late model F14A. So this is the one that's got the, uh, the launch carrier set. So, here in front we have got, uh, and get the reflections off it, I'm going to struggle, let's just put that down for a second. Right, here we've got the original kit, which I still haven't built yet, unfortunately, to my shame. Uh, bow my head in shame, etc, etc. But, a very, very nice kit. That's putting it mildly, quite frankly. Uh, many of you uh, will have probably built this kit, whereas I haven't. So you'll know more about it than I do, frankly. But, everybody seems to be of the opinion that that is probably one of the greatest model kits that's ever been created. It just falls together. The engineering standards in this kit are basically surpass anything else you've ever seen. Now I've raved about the, some of the other Tamiyas of course, uh, including that beautiful uh, Messerschmitt MEBF 109 G6 which was amazing. People tell me this is even better uh, and the, the sort of uh, clever way they have um, avoided seams and avoided joins uh, and you can actually build this kit, it's so good, you can actually build it. Some people have actually done it without using any adhesive, no glue. The fit is so perfect, the parts will actually hold together without using glue. Wouldn't advocate that necessarily, unless there's a specific reason that you perhaps you go to lots of exhibitions and you don't want the glue bits on. But things like the wings, the tails, you know, even some of the weapons and things like that, and um, the fins underneath. You don't have to glue them on, they, they're such a perfect fit, they will actually hold like a friction hold. Remarkable engineering, remarkable engineering. Anyway, that's the old kit, um, old kit from 2016. Today we're going to have a look at the new one. Now we won't go through all of it, there's no point in wading through it again, because three quarters of the kit is the same kit. But of course, the big problem with this, the only problem with this kit, apart from its decals, <laughs> shall I always say. But the other problem was the fact that people were quite dismayed, I think was probably the right word, um, when it was launched in 2016 at uh, Telford Scale Model World, and it's the week of Telford Scale Model World now as I speak, um, it didn't have the option to be in the carrier launch position with its flaps down uh, and the front uh, wing slats open. And this really did annoy people. I must admit, I was slightly disappointed by that. Um, I say I've not built it so uh, I'm not in a position to give you an after build review yet uh, but I think we can predict what that will be really so maybe I won't bother. It might be a waste of everybody's time including mine. Um, we know it's going to be fantastic but it doesn't have this launch position which people do like with a Tomcat and of course AMK came out with a, a launch position uh, Tomcat where you had the option now the problem with theirs was that you had, I think, three options on the wing positions. Um, but you couldn't swing the wings. You had one of three positions, fully out, fully in, or half half in, half out. Um, so theirs wasn't perfect either, really. And they had completely incomprehensible instructions, the kind of thing that nobody's ever seen before, quite frankly. Uh, it looks like aliens wrote it. But anyway, we move on. So that was the criticism of this kit. And Tamiar, I think, have been a bit stung by it. Um, because it was such a beautiful piece of model engineering. So many things that they thought of that other people haven't thought of. Clever innovations, little subtle things in the kit that just make it easy to build. Um, I mean, this is not intended for, intended for beginners at all. And yet, uh, I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner either, but a relative beginner could still make this kit, make it well. Because it just, because I say, you don't need to go crazy with adhesive and things that you can go. I saw one guy, uh, I think it's Scalaton. And he assembled this on and he does these brilliant build videos, which I don't do because I do find them boring. I don't find his boring. There's one or two that I actually quite enjoy watching. Uh, and it's not a criticism of others that, that I don't watch. But what was remarkable about him when he built this was just the, the lack of adhesive. He used adhesive, but it's just a touch here and a touch there. Just a little touch on the contact. But he used almost nothing. And I thought, God, I've never seen anybody use so little. And then, of course, people came out and said, we well, don't need to, that's why. Um, but if you go look at his F14 Air, this one, it's worth a, it's worth a look. Quite a good build, to put it mildly. <laughs> if I get three quarters of the way to what he achieved, I'd be very happy. Anyway, 
let's put that on one side, uh, gently put that over there, and we'll concentrate on the new kit, and we'll concentrate on the new parts that are in it. So, I have to say the artwork on this is just really stunning. So, let's have a look. Let's angle it a bit more so we don't get too much of the reflections. I do struggle with my reflections a little bit. Bounce it off the floor a bit more. There we go. Um, so, beautiful artwork. Let's zoom it in for you. Here we go. Now then, you can see we've got the uh, the deck officer, the launch officer here, or the shooter, as they call him. He's got shooter written on his, uh, his Mae West uh, day glow yellow jacket. Um, one that's depicted is on the USS John F. Kennedy. And it is model number uh, 61122. And description is as follows, gives you the sort of the general uh, width, uh, wingspan and length etc, same as before. Uh, flowing form, reca uh, recreating with fixed description, fixed depiction of the variable sweep wing deployed with flaps, stacks, retracted nose, retracted nose landing gear parts, recreating takeoff stance includes two types of catapult, shuttle and fl paper flight deck sheet, Ooh. features a one piece rigid spar, so again, that's important, isn't it? I'll just zoom back out. Quite an important point to, to mention. I I thought I did see a review of this when it first appeared in the States a few months ago. I think it may be on Andy's hobby headquarters. And he was quite quick, quick off the mark with it. And I must have maybe I wasn't concentrating because I thought that what they've done is added this fixed spar and these flaps and slats into the existing kit, but I've got a nasty deal to check. Got a feeling that they haven't. I think you, it's either or. You can't have the wing sweeping in this version. It is fixed, so it is literally launch set and nothing else. Um, which is a bit disappointing because I, I would like to have seen them sort of modify into one kit and almost, you could argue, drop the other kit. Maybe just keep the decals and give you both kits in one in effect. So you've got the option to have it either way. I am reliably informed that you can, if you have both kits. You can actually modify it in such a way that you can get the standard kit with its variable sweeping wing to take these flaps and slats and make one or two minor modifications. But it means cannibalising two kits, and this is £90 in the UK. So I'm not sure that's the way to go really. So I think you really decide, if you want a sweeping wing you go for the standard original kit. If you want the launch position you go for this one instead. But there isn't two kits in one. It's not either or, it is just a fixed wing, so we need to be clear about that, because I think there's, uh, I think I saw another review where I, I was a bit confused and it wasn't clear, I'm making it very clear, it is what it says, it's launch position, that's it, you can't have the wings swept back on this, and they don't sweep, they're fixed, okay, anyway, let's have a look, um, you've got four marking options, three figures, I think it's got, we'll look into it, but I think it's got some different uh, figures, I think they've got different uh, later um, helmets and, and visors. Uh, and of course this later version also has things like, let's have a look on the side because I think it'll tell us, I'll zoom in, let me ramble it off, let's have a look. It'll tell us here, whoops, a bit closer would help, there we are, now then, what have we got? As you can see, it shows the, the shooter, the deck officer, who's the uh, catapult officer, right here. We've got AIM9LM Sidewinders, so it's a 9LM, uh, the later Sidewinder. Uh, the AIM7 Sparrow, Phoenix, same as before. Tarps Pod, now that's not, I don't think that's original, in the original kit, so that's an addition. Uh, and then you've got the Land Trim Pod, which is the navigation pod, isn't it? Land. Uh, terrain following radar uh, navigation system. And then we've got the uh, laser guided bombs with the GBU-16, the big one, the Paveway 2 and the Paveway 2 GB-12, slightly smaller one, and also a conventional Mark 82 500 pound bomb. So they, those are, uh, these bombs were not in the original version, none of these things here were in the original kit. On the other side we've got some graphics, just oh, reflections are merciless aren't they? I'm not sure where the reflection is actually coming from. It's coming from the overhead lights. I can't do much about that. There we go. How's that? Um, yeah, we've got a couple of versions here. We've got the uh, the John F. Kennedy, the Swordsman, 
uh, and we've also got the Black Knights and I think is it the Checkmaters is the other one that's included in the kit, we'll have a look later and then we've got some really nice um, pics here of the finished kit, you can see the shooter the deck officer there and it clearly shows the uh, the cradle, catapult shuttle cradle system and the the flaps uh, deployed with the slats forward as well. So there we go, let's have a look then. Now this um, this kit has indeed just arrived uh, today with me in the last 24 hours so uh, uh, what I have done is, uh, just to save time, I've opened, I think there's three or four bags where the sprues are different and or new. So I've taken the Tamiyar staples out, that's all I've done. I haven't opened anything else. Uh, we're not going to go through the whole kit though, we're just going to really look at the uh, differentiating parts. So, I'm going to move that over here, if I have a safe place for it. Um, and we're going to get out the relevant bits including the instructions, which we'll have a look at. We're not going to go through it word by word or page by page. Um, bum, 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 bum. Now, I'm pretty sure that all those are the existing sprues that were in the original kit. So we're going to put, see what we're doing, put the kit aside, if you will, just indulge me for a second, to keep this simple. Let's move that. I didn't, I didn't like the Tamiyar boxes as well, I like the artwork, it's got such present. It's big as well, it's about 30% bigger than the other box. You know. Anyway, let's put that there. It's safe. Let's see what we have got here. And we'll actually open them up now. Um, I probably won't open the decals at this point, if I'm honest, because I think the only thing to note about the decals that I think you have to be a bit careful of Underline. So we'll open them. Let's have a look. Let's not cheat the customers. Let's give them what they want. It's only like a heat sealed bag. This is just like a... There we go. So, what we got? It might help if I open this as well. Let's get this open. This is where they use this very strong tape really carefully. They have a habit of using tape that's almost impenetrable. Oh no, not this time. This time they decide to be sensible ish. But I don't want to rip it. I'd rather. I'd rather tear it. If we can. It's never, everybody seems to have a problem with this. It's never easy. Why have they put such strong tape on? I don't get it. There we go, we're in. <clears throat> it seems easy to rip it either end, but in the middle it's just like bulletproof tape. <laughs> it's still being resistant to opening. There we go, right. First of all, I'll zoom you in. First of all, we've got a correction sheet here. And it's basically, it's quite an amusing one, this. It uh, looks like it's a uh, just a decal, decal, if I'll say it correctly. Uh, it's just a decal that apparently in the instructions it shows it back to front uh, and it's supposed to be, uh, it's on the, I think it's on the lantern pod, and it's supposed to be, yeah, it must have had the aircraft or, or the direction showing reversed by mistake and they're saying note the direction, correct direction. So that's, that's quite an amusing slip up, not like Tamiya to make a a faux pas like that, to be fair. So let's have a look what we have. Now then. We have got instructions, pull the call out sheet. Um, first of all, we'll start with this. It's the uh, info sheet. Now I do like this about Samia. This is where your Chinese manufacturers are just not in the same ballpark. Tamiya are producing a data sheet with photographs of the real aircraft as you can see um, okay the photos are in black and white but that doesn't frankly matter uh, it shows the uh, different the glove vane which I don't think operates I don't think the glove vane operates I think they welded them shut somebody was saying I'm sure I read that somewhere that's the first thing 
Then there's the... Oh, okay, let's we go and switch. If we just flick it over, we get the English version, it actually tells us. So it's all about the camera set. Uh, underwing glove antenna, that's what it's talking about here. There is this... Uh, there. Antenna system under the wing glove. So I think the wing, I think I'm wrong. I think the wing glove does still operate on this version. I think on some later ones they welded them up. I know the tornado I think was originally going to have a wing glove, wasn't it? And that was welded up as well. Um, and it shows it here: F-14A ready for takeoff. And then there's a shot of it uh, in flight with an A6 intruder. I think it is in the background. And then this is where it gets really interesting. Let's just see if we have a fraction. So it shows the takeoff stances and it's got the normal stance and the takeoff stance below. And then in great detail, the hold back bar, this is what I was actually wondering what they were. So the bar, the hold back bar is the thing that stops the aircraft creeping forward when it's on the catapult. Which it could do, if there was no hold back bar, it would start creeping forward just because just its engines are running, even though they're at low throttle, while it's waiting for takeoff. So the launch bar is obviously the thing that I think it flicks up, doesn't it? Uh, the catapult bar, hold back bar, sorry, that also flicks up uh, and then drops down behind as it starts to move forward. And then the catapult shuttle obviously is the thing that actually holds it into the, the launch catapult, steam catapult itself. Then we've got some explanation, this is excellent, explanation about the wing cross section, retracted flap and slat, showing the exact positions uh, of the flat relative to the wing and the slat and then showing them in the open position which is brilliant really like that that's excellent and then underneath it, shows, it goes into detail about the jet blast deflectors and how basically it's, it's the sequence of events it explains uh, and how the whole back bar drops down detaches from the landing gear and remains connected to the flight deck Steam pressure accelerates the aircraft and then it catapults off the end of the deck, as you can see. He says. That's brilliant, isn't it? That's that's definitely what was needed, you know, first time round, if I've been completely honest about it. Um, but I like that. I think it's... Um, this is where Tamiyar, who are one of the more expensive manufacturers, let's be honest, this is £90, this kit, in fact, some places it's £100. I've seen it, the prices vary from 90 to 100 pence. But the, the, this is the differentiator that makes Tamiya so special because they explain everything, they do the research properly, they don't, you know, I'm not, not going to knock airfix, but there was recently this mosquito, there was a bit of a muddle up about, they went and uh, they, they got it right, but they, they, they took an example that they scanned and it was a, a tug uh, drone towing Mark 16 mosquito, and that's not really typical uh, around the Bombay. It had some one or two idiosyncrasies shall we say and I don't think that was picked up by anything so these guys do their research and get it spot on so I've got great confidence in that so then we have the uh, oh yeah the model t hints and tips well, I don't think we need that unless you're a beginner it's probably not a beginner's model on 100 pounds is it then we've got this wonderful fold out colour call action look at this shows all the the data for the stencils all the decal data, all done nicely. Um, not like the Spitfire which Tammy did, which they, they made a bit of a faux pas with that kit where they put the stencil data, half of it was on the instructions, the other half was on the call, actually very confusing. Uh, that certainly caught me out, but I uh, got there in the end, obviously. But um, anyway, so what we got, the Swordsman, Cagbird, May 1990, and it's the Naval Air Station at Oceana. North Virginia, I think that is, isn't it? Um, and then we've got the other swordsman. So this is again, it's the VF-32. Uh, and this is a little bit earlier, a year earlier. This is on the USS John F. Kennedy. Um, it's not the one that's actually pictured, is it? Mm, no, the one pictured is actually the 1991 with the blue tail. Uh, that's fantastic. Really. And then the other side, I think there's four skins, isn't there? Wow. On this side you've got uh, the flying checkmates, there they are with their checkerboard red and white tails. And we've got the Black Knights VF-154, so it's VF-211 flying checkmates and VF-154 
the Black Knights, uh, and they're based in Japan by the sound of it. Uh, in 2003, so that's quite a late. So that you see, how these are the later versions, still still going, you know. But uh, these were used in the Gulf War, um, the Second Gulf War, 2003. No question. Very impressive, and that's superb clarity, great detail, shows you the colours, beautifully printed, crisp. Very, very nice, though. Very, very nice. Yep. So. Number of decals, you know, gives you the decal numbers. You're not left guessing what the hell they mean. They tell you exactly what you need to know. Proper detail. This is the decal. This is the colours. You know, tells you the colours. You know, these Chinese manufacturers, I'm sorry, you, you've got a long way to go to get to be ever be up with Tamiya. Got a lot of work to do. But it's not difficult, you know, just do your research properly. What they're trying to do is use CAD. And I think a few manufacturers, it's not just the Chinese, they're trying to use CAD to shortcut everything and get a great looking result and not really bother with anything else. No, that's not good enough. This is the way model kits should be manufactured. That's my opinion anyway. So I've got these um, decals. What have we got? Okay. So, zoom in for this. Quite a big amount of stencils it looks like here. And they look beautiful. Um, actually, they don't really look as... Uh, they don't seem as thick and nasty as Tamiya normally are. They feel very thin. Yeah, they do feel better than normal. That's interesting. Perhaps Tamiya have been listening to some of the criticism. So you've got basically all your weapons um, stencils here. And I think the main stencils are here. And I think the maps are on here as well. But you've got a couple of sheets, haven't we? You've got main decals there. And yeah, there are some stencils on here as well, which is interesting. Um, now, interesting point just to note that on this... Okay, this is the sort of low vis, the, uh, the swordsman. Uh, decals. Note here, um, as you normally see, uh, you've got your pilot and wizzo, uh, their names for the stencils for the side are here, all normal. Um, tell me I want you to use their decal for the, uh, the anti-reflection areas around the front and down the side of the cockpit. Uh, sometimes we'd spray that. I think it depends on your personal preference. But just just a word of warning. Look on the other sheet, the other decal sheet. I'm drawing your attention to this because here you have no choice. They've actually included the names of the pilot and the wizzo. Uh, they're actually in that um, anti-reflection surround to the cockpit. And again, here, look. Can you see it there? Same here. Now what this means is that you are not going to be able to spray if you choose those colour schemes, and they are quite impressive looking and very colourful. If you choose these schemes you're going to have to go with this, I don't know why they didn't do that separately and have a white decal that you could have put, applied onto the, the black painted surface. No, they made it all one so you've got to go with the decal, which is a little bit of a problem thing. Look at this. And these guys have been in the Gulf of Sidra, looks like it, because they've got, look, MiGs. They've shot down a couple of MiGs, that's a Gulf of Sidra story, isn't it? MiG-23s, sounds like Gulf of Sidra to me. Yeah, we know these guys are naughty. <laughs> they had no choice, did they? Right, that's, that's impressive. I mean, the, I say the decals do look. They don't feel the usual ultra-thick... Uh, I'm not saying they're not, but the impression they're giving me, they're not as thick as normal, they feel a little bit more sensible. Maybe Tamiya have changed their ways, which would be a good thing. Also we have, something that's unique to this version, is the wing sweep uh, sort of scratch marks that, are, that go in the paint. So you actually apply this as a decal, and it replicates the, when the wing sweep forward and back, just how much scuffing and uh, scratching is put into the paint. That's brilliant. Very clever. 
and that saves a lot of weathering, doesn't it? It's absolutely fantastic. So, put this back if I can. It's actually quite complicated because there's lots of decals. And then we've got a mask set. Uh, I think this uh, silvery bit here, self adhesive silver, I think. I think that's for the camera pod. Uh, and then you've got your quite substantial masks, it has to be said. They're quite big for the actual cockpit canopy. Let's get that back in its bag. It's safe. Put those away. There we are. Now, that was very impressive. So, so we've seen that and that, I'll put them out of the way. Let's get into just a quick flip through the, uh, the instructions because that would be uh, gives perhaps a little indicator as to where the differences are. So it starts off here with your, uh, it's got one of these quite narrow and tall uh, style Tamiya instructions they've started doing recently. So it shows you four schemes there and it goes straight into building up your cockpit. Um, somebody told me that. If you want the ultimate in uh, sort of instrumentation and detail, uh, obviously normally you can go for the likes of the Eduard Zoom sets or uh, the other one of course is the Yahoo, Yahoo, um, who are very good as well. But, but somebody said that the, the better option for these is the Quintus Studios, I think they're made in Portugal, Quintus Studios. Or is it Greece? No, not that well. Anyway, Quinta Studios, they make this 3D printed instrument sets and they are really nice. They have this proper 3D relief on them. And they're, they're almost like a decal but in 3D. So they really look like real instruments. So that's definitely a strong recommendation for you. So, as we're going into here, we've got basically building up that um, the cockpit tub. Oops. Cockpit tubs going in there, building up all your instrument sets. Obviously, you have to pay attention with these because there may be some relief you have to remove if you're going to use the 3D I mentioned. Um, aft station instrument panel for the Wizzo. Putting in all these uh, switches and panels with controls on them, all being brought in together. Then you bring in the back, uh, and it's, it's all in like a sort of bathtub style cockpit. As is normal. Landing gear bay, I don't think at this stage that's very much different to the other kit. Um, but I think it's different here because I think it's different versions of these later panels. Uh, instru uh, instrumentation, uh, the side panels. Uh, that might be an opportunity for doing a bit of diorama work and having those open, putting in some aftermarket. So I don't think there's any instruments as such included. Then you're going to bring obviously the nose, you're building this nose section as a uh, sort of a unitary modular nose, but it works very well in this kit, of course. Cockpit frame goes in, and then you're into one of the, the critical parts of the kit that's different here. So obviously we're now into the the fixed wing spar, because it doesn't have any movement at all. So it still screws in. It's kind of a bit of a waste, isn't it, really, I suppose, because you wanted the screws to enable you to avoid gluing on the original kit when you've got all these moving parts, which you don't have now. Anyway, it, it makes it very secure and very robust, you know. Um, but you, you put your spars in. Um, everybody says, by the way, you should put the spar. But you shouldn't really glue the wings on at the end because you don't need to. Uh, and you can always remove them then for transportation. Intake ramps going in here. And then, you, and then again it goes back a bit like the original kit where you, you're building up the main uh, central fuselage, lower fuselage section. Uh, pom pom pom, all that goes in, all your braces going in and your gear bay being built up. You've got the, the sort of aft upper fuselage section going in. Sorry I said lower, didn't it? actually the upper fuselage, but you're looking at it from underneath. So you've built your upper fuselage section, then you put your, your rear section in. Um, I think the glove, the vein glove, the wing gloves are slightly different design on this because obviously they will be because it's further further forward and fixed so it'll have a glove that reflects the inflated wing glove ring wing root glove for the trailing edge will be reflecting the fact that it's in the launch position bring all that in building up your intakes 
I'm going to flick through this fairly quickly. Um, yeah, intakes and your uh, air intake ducts into your uh, engine uh, compressor blades. All that is um, the ducting and all the intakes, uh, trunking is all going in there, and then the actual intakes and ramps are being fitted. Then you're building up your engines here, and then you get your di two different types of ducttail because, again, with it being the later version, you've got uh, electronic countermeasures uh, options there, two different types, as you can see. We have got, I'm just trying to get a bit more light for the purposes of the instructions, it's helpful. Then we've got the diff here's another one of the key differences where you've got this um, whole back bar system for the front gear, obviously for the catapult uh, shuttle positioning. Uh, you've got your whole back bar and you've got your, what they call it, the brace bar. Um, so that's all obviously quite different from the original kit. And you've got this, uh, the shuttle itself there, positioned here. And then you're going to put that in, so it looks quite odd, doesn't it, when you fit it upside down. Uh, so that's going in, that's a key differentiator from the original kit. Then you've got your main gear, which I think is pretty much the same. Uh, arrestor hook and main gear going in here. And then you've got your gear doors, arrest of hook, and uh, housing, and then you've got your bomb mounts and your weapons pallets going on here. Now this is where it starts to go different again because we've got the different weapons. So the weapons pallets themselves are slightly different design, a bit beefier I think. Um, because obviously we're going to have bombs, sorry I forgot to mention that your tailplanes are going on there as well. So your pallets are going in here, these big beefy pallets for the phoenixes and the various bombs etc. And then you come to your uh, fuel tanks. It was a fuel tank, wasn't it? Where they showed, yeah, they showed the, uh, yeah, they showed the direction of flow, and then they show it incorrectly. This is what the correction sheet was saying. So that, that is actually wrong. Ignore that. It should be the other way around. To that. Anyway, fuel tanks going in on those pylons under the intakes, and then we get into the meat and potatoes of the weapons your 9L M Sidewinder and your Sparrow A7M. Phoenix is as per the original kit and then we, do, then we go off and differentiate again with these 500 pound low drag general purpose bombs. These are not laser guided, these are just free fall bombs. Then you've got your laser guided Paveway 2, the GB12, the smaller one, and then the GB16, the bigger one. Uh, then there's the tarps uh, nacelle tarps pod so that is the target target acquisition uh, reconnaissance can't remember the whole wording of it but you get the idea target acquisition and reconnaissance pod and then we've got the lantern targeting purely a targeting pod here this is for the the paveways so this is to guide them down to the target all those then get put on as you can see mounted onto their various uh, pallets and pylons and then here's the different loadout options you've got you've got some nice uh, variations there all sorts of different options you can have uh, it's, it's works it's come with a good bomb set I think the actual munitions and uh, stores look excellent then you've got your tail planes and as I mentioned they're so beautifully engineered you can actually get away with not gluing those and just pop them on and then Unusually, at the end of the build, you've got the ejection seats and then the pilots. Now, these are a little bit different, these pilots are, from the original. I think these two here, I think, are the same as the originals. Then you've got two different ones with a later type helmets. So that means we've got some extra pilots. I think there must be four in here in total. Uh, and then you've got your anti glare shields for the cockpit going in. Popping in your pilots there. In goes all the various aerials and sensors and pitots and things. Then you're building up your actual canopy, mask it off to spray paint it. And then of course, tell me I've got this very clever designed front windscreen where you actually have the windscreen actually joins into the front part of the nose. Instead of it being a separate piece of glass where you can get danger of fogging from the glue, 
your glue is well away from the actual piece that is going to be clear so you actually mask it and then you spray to make it look all integrated in the normal way. Very clever piece of engineering from Tamiya. Oh there's an air copying that I noticed. Uh, what was it the kit of the week I saw? Somebody else had done the same thing. I uh, can't think what it was now but it's certainly been emulated by other people. And then we get to the, the meat and potatoes of what's really different which is the launch position leading edge slats. So you've got some work to do to assemble those and a little bit of fine detailing work with the painting. Then you've got your uh, flaps at the back of the wing, uh, including your decal, decal, for your scrape marks that are on the paint. And then it basically goes into the details of how you're going to build up that wing and then put these flaps and slats actually into it. And I'm very confident this is going to go in beautifully. I'm sure they've engineered it superbly as ever. Then finally the wings are going on, your modified, fully inflated uh, wing uh, gloves, not gloves, sorry, the uh, airbags I should say, gloves. the airbags at the back of the wing uh, that seal the gap, uh, and then you've got the, uh, again, modified angled uh, sealing strips here, because it's in that launch position. And then it shows you how it should look at the end with the... Uh, uh, the deck, piece of deck, which is I think a piece of card, uh, it's all printed up for you, and the shooter, the catapult officer, uh, and it gives you the top view and everything. It's great detail about how to paint him, one or two decals, and there we have it. There we have it. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's quite a lot there, isn't there? You know, I mean, bear in mind this is only 48 scale. It's, ooh, it's very involved indeed. <laughs> I love it. Now then. Let's have a look at the plastic. That's what we came here for. Uh, I'm just going to pop all that paperwork away if you just bear with me so that we don't end up with it all over the damn place at the end. Let's just pop those safely away. Definitely as well. Let's fill them to one back. And then we'll be safe as it is. There we go. There we go. Right. Out of the way safely. Now then the plastic. Uh, we're going to concentrate on these sprues that are different from the original kit. Where to begin? I think we begin with the wings and the spars. So, let's start with the wing spar. I'll bring you nice in and close so you can see this properly. Here we go. Right. Here we are. So, as you can see we've got this reinforced wing spar that is fixed not, not rotating like the original ones could do. We've got our shooter, our catapult officer here. Here he is. And beautifully formed, I've got to say. And the Tamiyars, look at the, the goggles he's got here, look. Look at that. Tamiyar are absolutely brilliant at this, they do figures, I've got to say. You know, some of their armour kits have come with figures and they've been just brilliant. So we've got that, we've got the, um, uh, the wing glove here, which I just mentioned, the modified glove. Then you've got um, your ventral strake fins underneath. And here is one of the critical parts, of course. This is the, again, one of the different parts because it's the front uh, nose leg complete with the whole back bar. That's this bit here. No, sorry, I'm wrong. <laughs> This is the whole back bar on this side, I beg your pardon, that's the whole back bar. This is the catapult bar and this is the actual shuttle itself, uh, which actually fixes into the deck. So that's really impressive. Then you've got these various bits of instrumentation. And it just looks typical Tamiya. Perfectly formed, no flash, no focus at the moment, I was going there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, no flash. Let's look at this um, uh, catapult officer. Let's just look at the reverse look of his jacket and body parts, legs, etc. Very, very good. Isn't it wonderful? That's very, very nice. Can't fault it. So that's great. Put that away. That's one. Now then, big sprue here. Big, big sprue. Yeah. So look at this. This is the wings. Obviously, this is quite different to the original. 
setup. Let's have a look in closely. So you can see you've got your flaps, uh, there you got your slats at the top. There's the slats. And no, I've so said the wing is, is devoid of the flaps and slats, a bit of a skeleton wing you could say. There's the flaps. Very, very detailed. And we just turn it around, you can see the other side. So you got, yeah, you've got plenty of ejection pins, but the time I seem to have learned. They're not putting injection pins anywhere that would cause any problems at all. Now. So, over on this side, I'll just turn it around for you. Over on this side again, another view of the other side. Flaps there, the main wing here. And there's the slat arrangement. Beautifully moulded. Yeah. No. No issues at all. Okay. Looks nice, doesn't it? Let's just pop that away. Zoom you out a bit. Let's see what's going on. Now then. What have we got? One, two, three. This is the sprue that's got the, the revised weapons on it. Oops. So we've got our GBUs, etc. here. The GBU 12s, that's what these are here, and then we've got the GBU 16s here, the bigger ones, and then you've got your drop tanks here. Um, I think most of the parts are the same. We've got some, I think here's your standard freefall bombs, 500 pound freefall bombs here, which are nice, and then we've got these different different versions of the, the pilots which have got these different uh, helmets configurations and the visors being a bit different here um, you've got your lantern pod down here so it's really nice you know um, I think the plastic colour is a little bit odd it's, it's quite um, it's quite a strange colour it's um, not like the other one the other one was more of a sort of a pale grey it's got a hint of I don't know, it's like a hint of khaki in it. <laughs> don't know if that comes out on the camera or not. There's two of these uh, sprues here that I've got in my hand, so we won't bother to look at the second one because they're pop. We'll pop that back in there. And then finally, we have one more here. And this has got the, uh, the tanks and. What have we got? The tanks. Uh, oh, yeah, and these alternative side panels that we spoke of when I said you could maybe get some aftermarket to do have it this panel perhaps have it open uh, you know up as a flap and then you could perhaps do some internal detail and you got your big uh, fuel tanks here and don't think there's any major difference at the back here don't think that they're particularly different uh, more to do with these uh, uh, so stores pod, my memory's gone, I can't remember what that one is actually. Uh, it's, yeah, it's gone. But anyway, different, a different weapon set out there. So there we have it really, and of course finally you've got at the back I mentioned, you've got this uh, countermeasures, two different types of countermeasures pods. You've got this long tail, duck tail, and the shorter one here. So obviously this one contains a lot more uh, flare dispensers, shaft dispensers, and, and all that kind of thing. So there we have it, there we have it. Now, I know I haven't gone through the entire kit, but I think we'll be here for hours to be honest. It's a big old beast, and of course we don't really need to because we've seen that many, many times already. Uh, I have to say, I, I, I'm a little surprised they didn't sort of, instead of having two kits, they've now got two lots of production really, haven't they? I'm surprised they didn't make it all one and just have it maybe charge another ten pound and call it a hundred pounds and have it so that you can you have these extra sprues and the extra uh, spar as an option in the same kit charge a bit more maybe even go up to hundred and ten pounds rather than have you know one or the other it would be nice to interchange them wouldn't it um, but there's a um, the Japanese chap he's a keen modeler call sign Cougar I think he's called 
I am reliably informed by him that you can do that. You can actually put, as I say, you can put the fixed, sorry, you can put the original moving system for the variable sweep wing and you can actually fit these new parts as long as you take the, f the flap off. It's the flap, not the slap, the flap. You remove the flap and then you put it in back in afterwards. <coughs> and you have got some degree of movement sweep. But you wouldn't want to do that if you think about it actually because at the end of the day the um, you only have those flaps come down when it's actually on the catapult ready to go or when it's on the airfield just about to lift off. You wouldn't see it slightly swept so I didn't really quite get that. But anyway, perhaps I missed something. What's the verdict is going to be the next thing? Let's just bring it back, the big beast, and see what we think and what rating it's going to get. I think I gave it 9 out of 10 last time uh, in its original version. But what should I get? Oh, hang on a minute, I've just realised we've forgotten the most important thing. I nearly forgot. Oh, how could you? It's because I left it in the box. The carrier deck. The carrier deck piece, which is this uh, it's a sort of a card, I believe. I'm getting it out without damaging it. A blue Peter moment, isn't it? I'm going wrong, thanks. Oh, here we go. Right, now I want to focus on this because I did see one other review and nobody really showed it particularly well, I didn't think. So let's try and give you a proper idea of what it looks like. I think I'll that in there, out of the way, and I'll zoom you right in for it. So, this is it. It is purely, I've got to be honest, it's purely a piece of printed cardboard of about 250 microns thick. Let's have a look. So it purely sits on top of this. However, the printing quality is phenomenal. I don't know if that's coming across. I think it is, actually. I think the camera's capturing that quite well. <coughs> so you position it, obviously, in the right way to make sure and follow the instructions. It shows you which way around it should be. And you end up with this um, wonderful diorama scene, basically. Um, the fact that it's cardboard, I, I thought, oh, that sounds really rubbish, you know, very naff. But it's not. Um, as long as you, you've obviously got to be careful not to damage this. But, but the quality of it, the printing quality, is really beautiful, I've got to say. It is remarkably good. So, yeah, put, put your Tomcat on there and you're going to have an absolutely stunning diorama with your shooter pointing for, you know, for the go moment. All good, as we say. So I'm going to try and put that back for two seconds, if I can. They don't do any damage, he says. Easy said and done, isn't it? There we are. I managed it in the end. Right. Got it. Now then. That is a kit that has been waited for for quite a while, and in some respects. Sort of unfinished business for Tamiya getting it right, isn't it? Really, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to mark it down because it hasn't uh, sort of amalgamated because it, it is doing what it says it does, it does what it says on the tin. Uh, I think the, the, the decal seem better, I could be wrong, but I haven't actually used them yet. And the proof of the pudding is in the eating, but they seem better, seem superior to me, I think that we have a winner here. I think that's an absolutely phenomenal kit. If you want it in the launch position in that, that moment before they, they they lift off, on its steam catapult, it's perfect. I, 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 from the box review, you know, somebody, somebody was saying to me a few days ago, by the way, about my border model um, review on the Messerschmitt BF109 G6, 135th scale, and he said, I really enjoyed your review, however, and he sent me a couple of links one two people have problems with that kit, I understand. It's not perhaps got the fit and the ease of construction that you might imagine. But anyway, I don't think that's the case here. I guarantee you it is not the case here. I am going to give this kit 10 out of 10. And I'm not saying that lightly. I think this is the... Uh, Tamiya have perfected it. They've got it absolutely spot on. I don't there's anything that's going to give you any problems whatsoever on any level at all. Um, the only the only tiny issue would be this thing about you know you can't you can't paint this yourself you've got to use the decal I could have knocked him a half point off for that but you've got other options you don't have to go that way 
Um, I'm sure if you want to go after market you can do it that way as well. It's not really a fault, it's just just their approach was strange that they've done it one way for a couple of squadrons and another way for this squadron. Might have been better if they'd given you those two decals as a separate and you can stick over a painted area that you've done yourself. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mark them down, I think that'd be very churlish. I think that's a ten out of ten kit. It's 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 like wing nut wings quality pretty much. Okay, they haven't got quite the wing nut wings instructional quality, but hey, they're gone. So we have to judge it by what, what we have available today. And I really think that that's as good as injection molded plastic kits are ever going to get. So for me, 10 out of 10, and I've not given that for a while. And apart from wing nut wings, I can't remember when I gave it. <laughs> so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vid. Please give me a 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up. Don't forget if you haven't subscribed already, you must subscribe to see all the other content very similar that I've got. Um, and other things too, including some, uh, some real aircraft and things flying about. If you are a subscriber, don't forget to ding the notification bell so you get early warning of any new videos that are coming up. Um, that's it from me for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I think we've got another new kit coming in very soon. Uh, so it won't be too long before I'm back with something else interesting, I hope. In the meantime... Thanks very much for joining me, thanks for your time, and take care of yourselves. Thanks a lot and bye for now.